Hi, this video is covering uh, rearranging equations and formulas. The learning goals for this video are to use the balance method to rearrange an equation and isolate a particular variable, and then also to solve problems by first rearranging a formula or equation. So uh, the goal, again, is um, be able to change a formula so that instead of solving for a particular variable, you're going to change it up so that you are solving for a different one. So for example, here we have um, the formula for the area of a rectangle. And it's designed so that if you know the length and the width, you just multiply them to find the area. Now, how can we change this formula so that if we know the area and the length of a rectangle, we can calculate the width? So in other words, I want to create a new equation so that instead of it saying A equals, I want to make it so that it says W equals. Okay, so in other words, I need to isolate the W here so that the W is only on this side of the equation and nothing else. But right now this W, sorry, this L is multiplying with the W. So in order to get rid of that L that's multiplying with the W, I need to do the opposite um, operation. So uh, to get rid of this L, we are going to divide by L, right? Just similar to if there was a 2W here, to get rid of the 2, you would divide by 2. Now again, if I um, divide this side by L, I need to divide the other side by L. So these L's will divide out. So you see, we just have W on the right-hand side. And then on the left, we have A over L. So this is a new formula. Okay? We can rewrite it so that it says this. W is equal to A over L. I'm just going to change the order. Okay, So this formula um, will find the width if you know the area and the length. We just do area divided by length. Okay, so that's a simple example, but we're going to go through some more complicated ones here. So to isolate a different variable in a formula, we're going to use the balance method. And we're going to treat the other variables that we're not isolating, okay, like regular numbers. So here's the formula for the surface area of a square-based pyramid. We're going to rearrange it so that it's written in terms of S. So in other words, we're going to isolate S here. Now, I notice that there's um, a plus b squared. Now, remember, when we're solving an equation, the first thing that we want to get rid of um, are any numbers that are adding or subtracting with the variable. So I'm going to get rid of this plus b squared first. And in order to do that, I'm going to do the opposite operation. So I'm going to write minus b squared. Now, if I do that on this side of the equal sign, remember, I have to do it on the other side of the uh, equal sign. Now, because I don't know what a or b squared is, I can't actually combine them to make something simple. I just have to rewrite this so that they're beside each other, just like that. So on this, uh, on the left-hand side, I'm going to write a minus b squared. Now, over here on the right, the plus b squared and the minus b squared, well, they've subtracted out. So I'm going to write equals, um, and I'm going to write what's left, 2 times b times s. Now remember, I want to have s by itself, but this 2b here is multiplying with s. So in order to undo that, we have to do the opposite, which is divide by 2b. All right, so the, the 2 and the 2 will divide out, the b and the b will divide out. So I'm left with s on the right-hand side. I'll just write that over here. And take a look at what we have on the left-hand side, this jumbled mess of letters. Well, that is actually the solution for s. Okay, So if you wanted to know the slant height of a square base pyramid and you knew the surface area and the base, this is the formula that you would use. All right. We can rewrite it so that it looks a little bit neater. Okay. So we have just rearranged this formula so that it has isolated s instead of a. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. Here's the um, area of a trapezoid. We're going to isolate b here. Okay. So I notice here, though, I've got a fraction. I've got this 2 as a denominator. So remember, to remove a denominator, we have to do the opposite. So right now it says divide by 2. Well, that means we're going to multiply by 2. Okay. And then that means I have to multiply 2 on the other side of the equal sign. So the 2's on the right will divide out. Now let's take a look what we have. We have 2 times a on the left hand side. And that's equal to, I'm just going to write down what I have left. I have in brackets a plus b times h. Now, um, 
uh, we deal with brackets last when we're solving an equation. So the next thing that we would look at is the multiplication here. So h is multiplying into that bracket. So I'm going to undo that by dividing h on both sides. So that means the h's here will divide away. So I'm going to write down what I have here on the, on the uh, left-hand side. I've got 2a over h equals, and then I'll write down what I have left on the right-hand side. So that's a plus b. So the last step here uh, to try to get b on its own is to get rid of that a. So I'm going to subtract it away. Okay. I'm going to do that to both sides of the equal sign. So I have 2a divided by h, and then I'm subtracting a. So I'm just going to write 2a over h minus a is equal to, remember that's uh, subtracted out, so I have b. Okay, so this formula here isolates uh, b in, in the, uh, from the original um, formula. Okay, so if you, uh, as you can see, all we're doing is we're solving an equation like we've been doing before. Um, except instead of dealing mostly with um, constant terms, uh, we have uh, variables. Okay, but we treat them um, as if they were just regular numbers. So we would divide them out, subtract them out, you know, that kind of thing. All right, let's take a look at this. Oh, this should be a V. Here, let's change that into a V right now. There we go. I'll change that for the handout. Um, this is the formula for the volume of a cone. So let's isolate R here. So again, I want uh, to remove this fraction. So this divided by three here, in order to remove that, I'm going to multiply both sides uh, by three. So those threes will divide out over here. That's the point. So on the, on the left, we've got three V, and I'm gonna write down what I have left, and that's equal to pi R squared H. Now I wanna isolate R, um, but it's being multiplied by pi and h. So to remove them, I'm going to divide both sides by pi and h. Okay. And here you'll see why. The pi and the pi will divide away. The h and the h will divide away. So on the right-hand side here, there is only r squared remaining. And then on the left, we have 3v over pi times h. Now the last step um, uh, to isolate r, because it's r squared, okay, to undo that we have to take the square root. Okay, Squaring and square root are opposite or inverse operations. So the r is what's remaining on the right and then over here we've got whatever it says. The square root of 3 times v divided by pi times h. All right, so you're gonna give it a shot here. You're going to rearrange the formula for the surface of a uh, area of a cylinder so that it isolates for H, okay? So you want to only have that left, okay? So remember, you wanna isolate, or sorry, you wanna remove what's adding or subtracting first, which is this, okay, two pi R squared. And then you're gonna to wanna to somehow get rid of the two pi R, okay? So that you're only left with H. All right, give it a shot, pause the video. Um, and uh, try to isolate H using the inverse operations, okay? And then when you're ready to check your work, just press play, okay? Good luck. Okay, um, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna remove the two pi R squared because that's adding to the variable. And the first thing that we always wanna do is to remove whatever is adding or subtracting. So we're gonna subtract two pi R squared, the whole thing, out. And then, but remember, we have to do that to both sides of the equal sign. So let's write down what we have left here. A minus two pi r squared equals, now remember this is gone, okay, that's, we subtracted it out. So let's write what we have left, two pi r h. Now remember, I wanna um, isolate h. Now two pi r, they're all multiplying with h. So to undo that, we are going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is divide. We're going to divide both sides by 2 pi r. That way the 2's will divide out, so will the pi's, and so will the r's, leaving me with h on the right-hand side here, and then that will be equal to whatever all this is, a minus 2 pi r squared divided by 2 pi r. Okay. 
So let's um, figure out a use for this uh, in terms of measurement. So the area of a semicircle is 200 centimeters squared. We're going to determine its radius. So we're going to use that formula. A is equal to pi r squared divided by 2. There's actually two ways to do it. We're going to do them both. The first thing that you can do is something that we did um, in a previous video, which is first just substitute and then solve for the unknown. So we already know what the area is of the semicircle. It's 200. So I can actually replace A with 200 right off the bat. Okay, so instead of writing A, I'm going to write 200 equals pi r squared over 2. And then now, after I've substituted, I can now solve for the unknown. So I want to get rid of that 2. Right now I want to isolate r. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 200 is 400 equals. Now those 2's divided out. So I'm left with pi r squared. Now I want to uh, remove the pi. Pi is multiplying with r squared. So I'm going to divide it out. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Now the pi's will divide out. So I'm left with, I'm just going to write it like this, 400 over pi is equal to r squared. Now remember the final step, when it's squared, to undo that, you have to do the square root. So we can then write r is equal to the square root of 400 divided by pi. So that is the exact answer. If you want a rounded answer, okay, we can just punch that in on our calculator. So let's do 400 divided by pi, figure out what that is, and then take the square root. So that's 11.28 um, centimeters. Okay, so that would be the radius of the semicircle. So there's a second way of doing it. So instead of substituting first and then solving afterwards, you can actually solve first and then substitute after. So this is where we're going to apply what we've learned today. So I want to isolate r. So um, first thing that we're going to do is uh, multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so that'll remove the fraction here. All right, so those 2's will divide out. This will be 2a is equal to pi r squared. Now we're going to get rid of that pi that's multiplying with r squared. We're going to divide both sides by pi. So those pi's will divide out. So we have 2a over pi is equal to r squared. And then remember, we're going to square root both sides to get rid of the square. So r is equal to the square root of 2 times a over pi. So that is the formula for the radius of a semicircle if you know the area. Okay. Um, but we know what the area is, right? The area, uh, the question said, was 200 centimeters whoops, squared. So we're just going to substitute that in. So that's 2 times 200, okay? and then divide it by pi is equal to the radius. Now we know that that's going to be 400, right? On the top, over pi is equal to r. So again, we arrive at the exact same answer, right? So that's, what was that again? 11.28 centimeters. Okay. So you can either uh, substitute first and then solve, or you can solve and then substitute. Okay. To, uh, so um, if there's no instructions on which way you're supposed to do it, you can do it either way. All right, your turn. So if the volume of a square base pyramid is 3,000 square meters or cubic meters and the height is 100 meters, determine the length of the square base. So there's the formula. Um, you can either substitute first and then solve or solve and then substitute. Okay, so uh, it's up to you. Let's see if you can uh, figure it out. So pause the video, give it a shot, and then when you're ready to check your work, press play. Good luck. All right. So because the video is, is called rearranging equations, I'm going to rearrange the equation first and then substitute. So I want to find out the length of the square base. So that means B. I need to know what B is. I'm going to isolate this formula for B. So the first thing is I see that 3 on the bottom. 
So I'm going to multiply by 3. That way they will divide out. So I'm left with 3v is equal to base squared times height. So the next step is I can get rid of that height. That's multiplying, right, with the b squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by the h. Those h's will divide away. So on the right, I've got b squared. On the left, I have 3v over h. The last step to isolate b from b squared, I take the square root. So this new formula, b, is equal to the square root of 3v over h. So let's substitute now. Uh, 3, and then instead of v, I know the volume is 3,000. And then the height is 100. So instead of h, I'm going to write 100. All right. Let's figure out what that is. So 3 times 3 thousand right and then divide that by a hundred whoops divided by a hundred gives me 90 and then I'll square root that so that's 9.49 I'll round it to okay. 9.49 uh, meters okay so um, so there's a lot of value in rearranging an equation so that you create a new formula to solve problems like measurement Okay, so um, I hope this video has made solving or rearranging formulas clear. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.